Yeah, it's been a, it's been a great experience so far. I've, I've actually been in India for almost a couple of weeks now, and I've been all over the all over the country. I started in Chennai, then went to Bangalore, then I went to Pune, then I went to Delhi, then I went to Taj Mahal. So I had to go to Taj Mahal. I can't just not go to India. But this is my first time being in India. Uh, like he mentioned, I was been with EA for 18 years, and it's been really great. The people have been great. The food is not as spicy as everyone told me it was going to be. So if there's another place I can get spicy food, please let me know. Um, but yeah, I've been really enjoying myself. Uh, I'm ready to go home. I'm actually going to leave tomorrow a little bit later. But uh, yeah, I, uh, let's get it going. Uh, so yeah, Ryan Faraji, uh, been at EA for a long time. And we'll start with a presentation of uh, who am I? I'm talking in the third person, but yes. So who's Ryan Faraji? Uh, I graduated in 2005 from the Cleveland Institute of Art. It's actually a, a town, uh, it's in Ohio in the United States. Uh, I grew up and, and was born there in Cleveland. Uh, and then in the year 2000, I decided to go into art school and my dad hated that idea. He was like, don't be an artist. There's no money in the artist. What are you gonna do? And so uh, I was like, you know what? I wanna be a painter. I wanna, be a, I wanna do graphic design stuff. I think every person that time wanted to do album covers. I don't think anybody cares about album covers anymore, but that was my goal as an artist. I want to do album covers. Uh, but eventually in my time at the, the CIA, uh, there was a program for digital media. And I was like, oh, I'm actually, you know, computers and doing the art on that side was pretty interesting to me. So I decided to go down that route. Part of my, my time at the, the, the art school uh, I really focused in on design, uh, those elements, and in addition to that, doing web stuff, animation, uh, and then I jumped into 3D. And 3D was like the one thing that I'm like, oh my God, I'm really good at 3D, I can, I can rock this stuff. And so then EA came calling one day and said, hey, come work for us. So I got recruited directly out of college, went to EA, I started as a, um, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So they said, EA said, come work for me. So then I moved to Orlando, Florida. So I've now been living in Florida for almost uh, 18 years working for with EA. Uh, and we're gonna jump into more of a timeline history of my career at EA. I started off as an environment artist. I actually thought I was gonna be a lighter because that's what I enjoyed doing. I was lighting some environments because I was really in, in tune with just changing the, the, I would start with like a rainy scene, then I'd go to a sunny scene, sunset. Um, but then they wanted me to do environment art. So I started with Superman Returns. I don't know if anyone's ever played that game. You guys are probably weren't born yet. But that game had came out. I did a lot of environment stuff for that. I then got pulled over to the Tiger Woods PGA Tour game. Uh, and I started making vegetation. I don't know, anybody here make trees? Made trees? No? Okay. Yes, you know me. Do you go outside and you just stare at trees all the day? And you're like, oh my God, how does that one look? And that, that. So that was my focus for almost like three years. I just stared at trees and built trees. Very exciting times. I then moved over to um, the world building aspect of the golf game. So then I do, I would travel to the golf courses. We would scan them, use LiDAR, photogrammetry, and I would work with external partners on kind of building out the levels. That was a good chunk of my environment career at EA. It got me to really understand working with external partners and how, how we can communicate, learning different cultures. And they would come and, and understand, oh, this is, you know, this is somewhere in New, York, New Jersey overlooking Statue of Liberty. This goes here, this goes there. Um, but yeah, it's just really a good understanding about building worlds in different, between two different countries. Uh, I did get a chance to do some lighting for a period of time at my time EDA. I did, uh, it wasn't as exciting as I thought it was gonna be. It was more of just copying a lot of code, doing moving different things. Still, I think there's areas in lighting that you can do and maybe in the film and industry tape, uh, side of things that could be more interesting. But I got a calling from the college football team or university team to do uh, uniform production. So I was doing environments for a really long time and all of a sudden they were like, hey, you're good at doing working with certain vendors. Can you help us build uh, uniforming kits for, for college football? I have to tell you, there's over 2,000 uniforms that I would be working on in one course of a year. And they're like, wow, you're really good at this. Maybe you should jump over. Uh, can you want to do more character work? I'm like, ah, I mean, I'm an environment artist. I'm good at doing you know, external development. All right, why not? So they put me over onto American football, which is Madden football. And I started working on head productions for, for a couple of years with that addition. Anybody do heads, character assets? Same crew. So there's only a couple people here, y'all. Anyways, 
heads, I found myself not to be as exciting as I wanted it to be as well, uh, because you do one head and you do up to 2,000 different heads and it's very repetitive, where I thought environments was more interesting over as a, as a whole. I had then an opportunity a, uh, coming into my time where a group called Distributed Development opened up. And in Distributed Development uh, was the management track. So I made that big jump from being an artist to management. They were like, oh, you're never gonna do art again? Not true. Uh, I ended up going into the management track, doing external development for managing all the, the vendors from that standpoint, uh, traveling to different vendors, researching the vendors, uh, adding a lot, a lot of knowledge and understanding uh, of different countries and who we should work with and how we should work with them and making sure those engagements run on time. And primarily that was on the sports side of things. So I'd be working on the college football, the, the Madden, the NBA game and the Kyger Woods game as well. Then our group and organization merged with a group called XDI. You might ask yourself, what is XDI? because EA has an insane amount of little subcultures and things like that happening. And XCI is the external development intelligence organization inside of EA. We are a group of roughly around 12 people right now. And what does that mean? What do we do? We work with all the studios across EA. So there's 52 something plus titles happening across EA right now. Uh, we're, we're touching pretty much every single one of those and helping support them. Uh, we help evaluate and review service providers from all around the world. That's why my time here has been mostly just going and visiting vendors and finding, discovering new vendors. So if you're a service provider and you haven't talked to us, you know, reach out to me. Actually, there's someone in here, uh, my colleague here. Uh, we'd love to learn more about your company. Um, but yeah, our goal is to kind of find new talent, work with existing talent, and build relationships with EA uh, so that we can make the best games possible. And so these teams, are, these teams actually don't do as much of that we're there for that intelligence and organization and the due diligence to make sure everything's running, running smoothly. So that's been my time so far at EA. Uh, 18 plus years will go by like that in your career uh, in game industry. I didn't even realize it. I was like, you know, you have this, this idea of like, I'm gonna make album covers. And all of a sudden you're like, I'm managing, I'm in India and I'm speaking at a conference and I'm like, you know, so this, you never know what your life is gonna hold for you. Uh, you can always kind of steer it, but it's gonna keep going in that direction. So, why am I telling you all this? Legitimately, like, like this has, what does this have to do with the presentation? So, while being an external development manager, my goal is I look at so many portfolios a day, so many pitch decks every day. I get pinged on LinkedIn probably every single day to some degree of someone saying, hey, I'm this and that, can you look at this, can you do this, can you do this? And so my goal right now, and this thing is gonna teach you something that will probably either be super beneficial for the rest of your life, maybe, that's too, maybe not, that's too profound. But it's gonna be very helpful in how you present your portfolio, even if you're a young artist trying to get into the industry, or if you're an existing vendor and you're trying to present your information out. So I have three points, three principles to, to be the best at presenting yourself or quote unquote, upping your game in the industry. So first I'm gonna start with is what does good look like? Then I'm gonna jump into design and color, and then I'm gonna talk about your comms and your communication uh, in the industry. So let's get going with, am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? We're good, I think we're good. Click it, okay. This is, seems like the most simplest thing in principle, uh, for when you're presenting or putting things together in a, in a deck or a pitch, is starting strong and ending strong. I can't tell you how many times that people sit down with me and they show me a piece of work and it's like something that's in progress that's not very good and they're like, this is my portfolio and this is what I'm doing and this is what we're doing and I'm like, that's my first impression of you. It doesn't matter. You go to anybody around here, you meet somebody, if you said, you know, you start off and saying something really awkward, that's their first impression of you. Same thing with art and your portfolio and your pitch. We wanna make sure you start your thing strong and then you can leave all the stuff in the middle that you wanted to present in there. Sometimes I would say also, uh, leaving some of the stuff that's maybe not as useful, you can make that decision not to put that in your portfolio or in your pitch. Ending strong too. We are always like, I sit in rooms and I'm in boardrooms and things like that or I'm sitting with somebody and you always on that last slide. That last slide is the last impression of you. 
I, it's funny to me because like I'll meet somebody and I'm like, hey, I remember your piece. And it was the first thing that they showed me is what I remember of their portfolio. So keep in mind, start strong, end strong, super simple, super key, super helpful. I can't reiterate that enough. The next point would be, let's see, click, click, click. Show your process. Simple enough, right? You'd be surprised how many people just show me a finished piece and they're like, this is what I did this. And you're like, well, they could, have been, they could have been doing something in the tiny little background. I had no idea what they did in that process. So you show me your process in your portfolio. You can say, here's my final piece as a starting point, and then here's the process that got me there. Because what am I seeing in the process? I'm seeing how you think as an artist, as an industry, as a person. So when you show me that process, I understand how you're gonna build the asset for me, how the asset's gonna be somewhat put together. Do you understand the top, what I'm asking for, the, the polygon count, the texture work, anything is very useful, even in animation, just showing your process. I mean, a lot of people here probably watch some of the behind the scenes of making of something. It helps understand what's gonna happen. How do they, how do they get to that point of that final product? How do, they, how do we break the illusion of what you're trying to build? Simple process, simple thing to add to your portfolio, but it's super impactful when we are reviewing stuff. So this is my favorite, favorite thing that's really useful and I use to this day, and it's actually everywhere you look in the world. This is one of those things you don't even think about subconsciously. You are walking around in a design state and color state from people that are artists that you know, are either interior designers, you know, environment designers, industrial designers, they use some of these same principles when they are trying to put things together. So these are the things that I've learned that are super helpful when designing and your color styles for your, uh, your portfolios and your pitches. Fonts. <laughs> Using too many fonts in your, in your presentations. No more than three, no more than three. I swear, just do not go more than three. If you go more than three, it's gonna look like this. You try to read that right now, it's just, it seems cluttered, messy. I mean, if you wanna break the boundaries and go beyond that, sure. But I recommend not going more than three different fonts in your presentations or anything. Uh, it seems simple enough, but it, it's super helpful. It's been beneficial to me uh, over the years in putting things together, so. What's the next thing? The range of sizes. Three levels. Another thing too is like, I've looked at infographics, I've looked at different things. People will either keep things at a medium, medium type font, and it just seems like a lot of information that you're trying to read. Because from my, from my standpoint, I have a, a short attention span, and the way I read things is like, I will read the bullet point first, if the bullet point is uh, impactful, then I'll read the next thing, the medium level. So you want the topic to be your most impactful statement. You want your medium to be that topic of the brief simplicity of your su subject matter. And then the small thing is all the things if somebody really wants to take the time and read all those little details about your topic. So that seems simple enough, I feel like. So large to medium to small. And I want you to do is like, I want you to walk around and read things. If you go into your hotel, Read the pamphlet that you're gonna see. You'll see all these similar principles happening uh, throughout those, uh, those little things that people are putting together. The third, uh, the third thing in the design thing uh, is the color stuff. And this is my favorite area as well um, when we talk about color and design because a lot of people really struggle with this. You know, and if some people are either, they're not artistic at all, but I'm telling you, you can use these things and design things that are gonna be useful to you uh, in your pitches. The accent color, um, and then also the similar hue color. So I started, this is the most challenging thing. I'm putting a presentation together about doing presentations, so there was no pressure here for me to be like, this has to be the best presentation ever, because quite <laughs> frankly, I don't think it's the best presentation I've ever done, but you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. I try to keep it simple. Uh, but yeah, the color palette that I chose here, you want to start with these are your base color, your similar hue color, and your accent color. Those are gonna be your, you're going with two colors for a presentation. You're not going any more than two colors. Stick to two colors in the same hue range. And then your fonts can usually stick to either a white or a black to be super descriptive and legible. 
Sometimes if you're using color in your fonts, usually I only do that with a photo, uh, like a photograph of something that matches that similar image. So if you're trying to be uh, for a magazine or something like that, you know, switching your color uh, is the only reason I would ever kind of jump into that range where you're trying to switch that. Now, the complementary color. This is the thing that's like, you want something to pop, you want something to really stand out, throw a complementary color in there, because right now, everybody in this room is looking at that green and they can't look at anything else, so understandable. Now, let's take a pause. I came into IDDC and I'm like, did you guys realize they use these exact same principles? Base color, the accent color, and then that's what's the uh, and then what's the uh, the complementary color is the IGC logo is predominantly orange. The complementary color. There you go. You don't even realize it's happening. Your whole world is blown right now. All right. I'm, I'm going way too fast. I gotta slow down. I'm gonna wait too much time for questions. All right, communication. The comms. I gotta do a lot of clicks here. This is my favorite part because it's gonna be really understanding your audience. All right, so I came into India. I had no idea how much you guys use Hindi. I was like, seriously, I was like, I, was, I flew into the airport and I'm sitting there looking at the terminal waiting for the thing to switch to English because I'm like, where's my flight? Where's my baggage gonna be? It's just like waiting, 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 waiting. I'm like, you know what? I'm speaking to an audience here that probably really values this. You know, they're like, there's someone here who's not, their English is maybe not as strong or their legibility. So this is helpful. So if you're in a location and you're going somewhere and you're talking to someone, um, I've done this for Mandarin, super useful. Just double check your spelling because I actually had someone validate all this to make sure I wasn't saying anything offensive. Um, and, but yeah, so understanding your audience. Um, they value that. People really value that, you know. This is a, uh, a footnote and just kind of where I come from on the publishing side is people share things with me that I will not open any kind of file that is a zip file or um, things that come from a sketchy website or anything like that, I will not click on it. So a lot of things I would recommend if you're gonna share a portfolio piece, a document, make sure it comes from a trustworthy site. That seems like the most simplest thing too, but a lot of publishers and things like that will not open things because we are working on a, a machine that is attached to a network across the industry, you know, across our entire infrastructure, that if I open up a virus, you know, there, I'm gonna get a lot of crap for that. So I recommend sending something through like an art station or even like a, your own website or a LinkedIn profile that I can then click through to review um, that really is super helpful in kind of evaluating stuff uh, in the industry. Okay, <laughs> this is a hard one to understand and I feel like uh, I get I get people uh, like I was mentioning earlier on LinkedIn quite frequently. If I don't respond right away, it's not because I don't I didn't like you or I wasn't offended. But be patient and, with a slight resistance because you you'll initially reach out and say, "Hey, we'd like to work with you. This is what we got." And I'll usually say, "Okay, thanks for your time. Either it's it's beneficial to me, and I'll, I'll forward that information onto my team." or at the time, I don't have time to look at it. Um, and then the next day I get another ping. Hey, did you look at it? Okay, too much. The next day, so it becomes a little bit more repetitive. I recommend if you're gonna reach out to someone, you reach out, give them a time. If they look at it, they respond. Check in quarterly, check in you know, periodically. You don't have to do it all the frequently all the time because if you're reaching out too much, it becomes a little bit annoying. But if you reach out just enough, it becomes just enough, enough pace for me to understand that like, to stay refreshed, to keep you in the back of my mind. So if something comes up, I want, I'm interested in reaching out and learning more. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm cranking through this. All right. I'm gonna la so this is, I'm gonna, hopefully this is gonna be ending strong. This is, um, hopefully not, maybe not. So go above and beyond. I don't know a lot of people realize this in my very, the very first slide of this presentation. I got a template deck from IGDC uh, that was like 
the standardized uh, Google Sheet, whatever. If we go back all the way to the beginning, I actually animated the opening slide. I updated the resolution of the image, the IGC logo, because it was actually a little bit less pixelated, so I up that image. Nobody noticed that, but I slightly did all that. I animated it. I also added an animated light bulb behind the orange thing. So I just went above and beyond what I was supposed to do. Everyone here will tell you, just do it. Just get it done. Do the bare minimum. No one will ever tell you to go above and beyond. That's where I excel. You go above and beyond. Do more than what is asked of you, and it will be rewarded for that. So I would highly recommend um, doing that stuff. And then also to stay true to yourself. Be good to yourself. I'm super happy. Is it, can I, should I, should I wrap it up here? Are we good to wrap it up soon? No, 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 we, we have ample time and I know it I was know. designed in a way. But this is almost the end of my presentation. So uh, I ran through this by the way, and it was like 28 minutes and I was like, <laughs> I'm just too excited right now. Um, but yeah, thank you guys again. I really appreciate um, being here. Such a warm welcome. Uh, this conference has been eye-opening and really insightful and I look forward to to meeting everyone and uh, yeah, enjoy my time. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully it was something, you know, I'm, I'm dead serious. Like you'll put this together, you'll sit there and you'll sit, you'll do a presentation. And you're like, wait, is there three levels of font? Is the colors look right? If it doesn't look right, that's just go back to these same principles. They, they should totally help you in putting these together. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there'll probably be some questions, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks, thanks, thanks for putting this together, Ryan. Guys, huge round of applause for Ryan. And this talk was deliberately designed a little shorter so that we have more time for interaction. So we'll really appreciate questions from you and we have ample time for that. All right, we, we can start with the Q&A session. Raise your hands up. I know people will start opening up slowly. Hi, uh, thank you for your insightful uh, presentation. Um, so I am from Japan. I belong to a Japanese uh, gaming uh, publisher, sorry. And uh, so I've been in India since five years. And this is, you know, not uh, by any means uh, to degrade, uh, you know, Indian uh, uh, employees or um, you know, it's not meant to be offensive in any way, but I'm sorry if you, any of you take offense for this, but um, like I, what I realized upon coming to India was that like um, a lot of Indian, I mean, sorry, a lot of presentation uh, made by uh, Indian employees um, tend to have a lot, a lot of text, like, in, in like each slide, there, there will be like 300, 400 words in each slide. And I actually realized that if I'm trying to explain um, myself like 100% clearly to the Indian audience, like whoever might uh, see the presentation, kind of tend to like over explain myself as well. Like I didn't used to do that when I was in Japan, but like after coming to India, like I feel, I kind of feel the, the, the actual need to like kind of over explain myself so that I'm like, 100% understood and like there's no um, confusion between us. And uh, so I kind of uh, felt myself change in that perspective in India, but your presentation, like, you know, let's be honest, like everyone understood you, I think perfectly, 100% clearly and uh, without any confusion. I don't think anybody mistook any part of your presentation. Like how do you simplify your your presentation so effortlessly and like so efficiently, like without well, over explaining. Things. I consider myself an idiot. That's, that's where you start. You, you, you simplify yourself. Um, you kind of come in at it like you're, um, I have children and you have to kind of explain things to your kids as well sometimes. And it's, it's always challenging. You got to start from the, you, you <laughs> even when presenting to a larger audience, it's, it's, it's challenging because like for me, I spent a lot of time coming and listening to different presentations. Understand, like I went back to understanding my audience. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be sitting in a room like this. There might be people standing in the back. People are leaving because I'm boring right now. So, but yeah, they're probably going to do something else. But there's, you have to kind of figure out how are you gonna grab the attention of somebody first off, and what are things that are gonna be interesting to those individuals. Things will happen on the cuff. 
part of my presentations, I actually don't, I don't necessarily script it verbatim. You know, I go back to the, I'm, I'm talking in a bullet point, then the bullet point goes to the meeting point. If it's going well, then I'll keep adding to that more details. So you really start with those, those topics and then you kind of build off of that and keep working on it. And also too, another thing is that you'll be more comfortable speaking if you really understand what you're talking about. If you come up there, if I, you know, I'm, I'm getting put on a panel tomorrow, I don't even know what I'm talking about tomorrow, but that's, and if you can come see me talk during that, but I have no idea what I'm gonna say. That's a little bit more challenging because at least I don't, I don't know how to, to anticipate what I'm gonna, the question I might get, how I'm gonna respond, what everybody else might say. But this is a controlled environment that I know that I ran through this presentation, I know exactly this, this, and this, and this. My timing was a little off, so which frustrates me, but uh, I'll do better next time. But yeah, it's, I don't know if that's helpful at all, but it, you know, you try to keep it fun, really, because you know, we're all here just trying to learn things. Um, I don't want to overcomplicate it and say, okay, if you, you, know, you type this letter and this equals this and this, this, um, so. Let me go back to that. I'll show you my first slide so everyone kind of remembers. That was a good one. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are right, you guys want me to do it again? The whole presentation? <laughs> Let's start all over again? Go for it? Okay. Hi, I'm Ryan Faraji. I'm with the A. Uh, I've been with the A for 18 years. So this is okay. where you can kind of see the animation. Any more questions, work. guys? Yeah, there, at the back. Can you please pass on the mic? Crew, can you please pass on the mic there, behind the camera? Hi. Um, am I audible? Yeah. So um, you obviously go through a lot of presentations, right? What is the one key thing that you look in the uh, look for in the presentations? Like, what is one thing that attracts you? What is we need? What is that we need to keep in mind when um, creating presentations? That's a good question. I mean, it's really the for me, it's it's knowing the that initial art piece that kind of like I see the potential because a lot of times people will make things and then like, yeah, you could see some finished stuff. But for me, my job is to find potential and find someone that has that ability. And showing that process and showing those things, some of your strong pieces show, and with that process helps me understand what you're doing, what you're thinking and identify that. Another big thing for me is that you're being true to yourself as an organization. I hate people that come in and they have like this whole, you know, this is my business and da 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 and you're like, I want someone that's going to be true, because we're trying to build a relationship, you know? Have you ever gone on a first date and they've just been totally lying to you the whole time and you're like, well, I'm not even doing that again. But if they come in and they're super heartful and honest, you want to build a relationship there. Same thing with any kind of artist, portfolio, anything. So, I could always go back to a dating reference, so if you would. So there you'll have the mic. Hello. Okay. So uh, my question revolved around uh, the UI part, which we are talking about, like the how to make it simple, how to make it more attractive, catchy, according to the location, type of people around. So don't you think it has become a bit saturated? And if it is saturated, what can be the new scopes of innovation in that direction? We're talking about VR, AR, XR. Still, it's a UI. It is catchy to you. Fine. At some point, there will be time that not anything which you uh, see feels repetitive. Hmm. Is your, your question is talking about being repetitive with your UI? Yes. Hmm. So it is simple. You said that everything around you is already following that rule. Yeah. So of course, uh, like to make it uh, catchy, you have to do that. It's a give and take thing. Now for the new market, it has to be something different. Or else if you grow with something and you end up like, uh, what's new in that? There has to be innovation in that. So what's your thought process on what innovations we have for the later stage in the market? So you're talking about creating something that's more interesting. Yes. Exactly, while staying kind of basic throughout yeah. your presentations. 
so that's a, that's a great question. I think for when my approach to everything is usually I look for inspiration. That's the first where I start. I'm like, okay, we go back to once again, what is your audience, right? Who are you trying to attract? What is the, what is the temperature you're trying to go for? And then I go in, I'm like, okay, I want to look at, uh, first I looked at, I go, what's blue and orange presentations? Cause I kind of want to match what the IGDC logo is. And I went from that point and I said, okay, this is what I'm looking for in my presentation. It wasn't really vibing with what I wanted. So then I go to something that's comfortable. Uh, color theory is gonna be your best friend in all this. So you look at the different colors. I, mean, I don't know, there was one thing we did in school uh, that's still profound to this day, is that we sat in different color rooms. <laughs> and we sat in a red room, we sat in a yellow room, and we sat in a green room. The red room, we came out, we all felt really hot. You just get the sense of warning, sense of heat. So once again, the color is determining the feel and the vibe of what you're trying to go for. Uh, the green one was everyone kind of felt a little uneasy, uncomfortable, not so great. And then you had the yellow one. I don't remember what the yellow one was. When that wasn't that great. But the things that are, that are going to determine what you're doing are starting with those principles with color. And then if you want, like these are just these are simple rules to start from. If you want to go beyond that and break boundaries, I'm telling you, go out and break boundaries and try to do something new as well. But that's going to be over time and with the skill set of constantly doing more and more and more and more and pushing the envelope more and more. So, but yeah, keep it basic, keep it simple, and then add little things to make it push it, push the envelope more. Because, you know, art is not just simply just repeating somebody else's stuff. You are imitating, you're amplifying, you're creating something new and something industry. But it doesn't always have to be the most profound presentation in the world. Hence, mine is not the most profound and perfect. So, um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Sure. Okay. Thank you. It feels like it didn't answer.